our Toronto studios. This is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Zahra Sayyid. Our top story tonight. As more than a billion Muslims celebrate Eid al-Adha, Gaza is mired in a severe humanitarian crisis. Nearly 2 million Palestinians face starvation, with rampant malnutrition casting a grim shadow over the Islamic holiday's festive spirit. The Israeli blockade restricting essential supplies for more than eight months has made it impossible for people to celebrate Eid. In northern Gaza, where Israel attempted to displace more than a million residents in October, the situation is dire. Independent United Nations investigators accuse the Israeli military of using starvation as a weapon of war, worsening the humanitarian crisis. Essential items are scarce and expensive. Experts warn of a looming famine with more than 200,000 children showing malnutrition symptoms. The Palestinian government media office accuses Israel of misleading the world about aid deliveries. In reality, only a few trucks enter northern Gaza daily, carrying mostly flour. Before the war, Gaza needed at least 500 fully loaded trucks of aid and goods daily. The United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees, or the UNRWA, has dismissed allegations made in an Israeli government-sponsored Google ad campaign as simply untrue. The campaign, appearing as sponsored links in searches for UNRWA, accuses the agency of compromising its neutrality. It links to a website making various claims, including staff involvement in cross-border attacks and infiltration by militant groups. UNRWA spokesperson Jonathan Fowler countered these claims, stating that independent reviews confirmed their robust neutrality framework. He emphasized ongoing investigations into staff allegations, but stressed that no substantiating evidence has been found. Despite condemnations of the alleged October 7th attack, Fowler reiterated that no UNRWA employee has been implicated. While the extent of the Google campaign's reach remains unclear, Google has stated that the ads comply with its policies. It did not clarify their geographic targeting criteria. UNRWA continues to challenge the campaign's assertions amid ongoing scrutiny. Tech giant Apple faces accusations of directing employee donations towards organizations linked to the Israeli army and illegal settlements in the West Bank. In an open letter to company heads, a group of 133 shareholders, current and former employees, expressed concern over where these donations are being directed. According to The Intercept, the letter calls for an immediate investigation and demands Apple cease donations to organizations supporting Israeli settlements and its army. Notably, Apple's donation platform includes groups like Friends of the IDF and Israel Gives, which allegedly support military and illegal settlement activities. Critics, including attorney Diala Shamas, highlight legal concerns and call for stricter oversight, noting the potential violations of international law. Apple has not responded to inquiries regarding these allegations. The controversy follows earlier protests by Apple employees supporting Palestinian rights, signaling ongoing internal tensions in the company. The University of Minnesota has halted the employment of an Israeli historian as director of Holocaust and Genocide Studies. The decision comes within two days of Raz Segal being hired. Segal currently is a professor at Stockton University in New Jersey. In a recent article he authored titled A Textbook Case of Genocide, he said Israel's goal is to destroy Gaza's Palestinians. Segal also warned those watching around the world are abandoning their responsibility to prevent Israel from doing so. Here is a special report by Muslim Network TV about the professor. He is Jewish. He is Israeli. He is a professor of history. But he cannot lead a genocide center in the USA. He is Raz Segal. Just two days after hiring him, the University of Minnesota has put his appointment as Director of Holocaust and Genocide Studies on hold. Why? Why is it that a Jewish Israeli cannot lead at the University of Minnesota? Because he uttered the G word. Professor Raz Segal's crime is that he refers to what Israel is doing in Gaza as a textbook case of genocide. No freedom of speech for him. 
we're seeing the combination of genocidal acts with special intent, this is indeed a, a, a textbook case of genocide. No academic freedom for anyone who speaks up for Palestine. It seems certain truths are forbidden in America. From campus to campus across the USA, professors are being fired, suspended, or removed from the classrooms for pro-Palestinian speech. Anita Levy says, we are at the dawn of a new McCarthyism. She is a senior program officer with the American Association of University Professors. As far as Professor Raz Sagal is concerned, he still wants his job. And he stands by his article entitled, A Textbook Case of Genocide. On Friday, the Supreme Court struck down a ban on bump stocks. It was enacted by the Trump administration after a 2017 deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas. By a 6-3 vote, the justices found the Trump administration has exceeded its power when it prohibited an attachment that enables a semi-automatic rifle to fire at a speed rivaling a machine gun. The court split along ideological lines in making the ruling. Experts say the verdict is a forceful rejection of one of the government's few steps to address gun violence, particularly as legislative efforts have stalled in Congress. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has blocked Senate Democrats' attempt to pass the Supreme Court Ethics, Recusal and Transparency Act unanimously. This legislation aimed to impose a binding ethics code on the Supreme Court, requiring justices to disclose gifts and establish recusal guidelines. The move follows scrutiny over justices' acceptance of luxury gifts and involvement in controversial activities, including ties to the January 6, 2021 insurrection. Democrats, led by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, argue the bill is crucial for restoring public trust in the court, which currently lacks enforceable ethical standards. Whitehouse said he was not surprised that Republicans blocked the attempt to pass his bill. Observers say Graham's obstruction underscores partisan divisions on judicial oversight, with Democrats' efforts likely to face further challenges in a narrowly divided Senate. Critics assert the need for judicial accountability amidst ongoing ethical controversies involving prominent justices like Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito. Phoenix, Arizona police guilty of constitutional violations against minorities. Details come after the break. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. The Justice Department has revealed that police in Phoenix, Arizona have violated the Constitution and federal law by discriminating against Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and others. Following a three-year investigation into allegations of brutality and discrimination, the department concluded that Phoenix police engaged in unlawful practice. These include excessive force, unjust detention of the homeless, and biased law enforcement against minorities. The investigation was initiated in August 2021. It highlights additional concerns such as violations of free speech rights and discrimination against individuals with behavioral health disabilities. Attorney General Merrick Garland says the findings underscore the need for accountability and transparency. He has also emphasized the importance of reforms to protect civil rights and enhance police community relations in Phoenix. The Council on American-Islamic Relations is welcoming the federal indictment of an Arizona citizen accused of planning a mass shooting at an Atlanta rap concert. He faces a number of charges. These include firearms, trafficking, and possession related to a hate crime aimed at African Americans, Jews, or Muslims. A number of reports say that the man intended to incite a race war. CARE Arizona Executive Director Azza Abu Sif expressed gratitude towards law enforcement for swiftly addressing the threat. She also stressed the importance of combating bigotry against minorities nationwide, affirming solidarity with efforts against anti-Semitism, anti-Black racism, Islamophobia, and other forms of discrimination. A new mosque in Baltimore's Harford County is facing hostility from some neighbors. Although the Harford Islamic Center has quickly become a community gathering place since it opened its doors in March, some residents oppose its presence. 
Mosque members have reported incidents of intimidation. These include photographing children and vehicles and legal disputes over its location. This is despite county officials confirming the mosque's compliance with local regulations and supporting its operation. Councilman Jacob Bennett has expressed solidarity with the Muslim community and is working with mosque leaders to address concerns. The United Nations Security Council is demanding that Sudan's Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, immediately end hostilities and the siege of El Fasher in North Darfur. Its resolution calls for the RSF to lift the siege, halt hostilities and ensure civilian safety. It also urges adherence to the Jeddah Declaration for Civilian Protection, as well as calling for increased humanitarian aid distribution. The United Kingdom's permanent representative to the United Nations, Barbara Woodward, has highlighted the severity of Sudan's crisis, stressing the need for unhindered humanitarian access. Over 16,000 Sudanese have been killed and millions displaced since April 2023, with Sudan's conflict remaining as one of the world's gravest humanitarian emergencies. More than 5,000 migrants have died attempting the perilous journey from North Africa to the Spanish coast between January and May 2024. According to Caminando Fronteras, a Spanish NGO, more than 4,000 deaths occurred en route to the Canary Islands, highlighting a grim reality of migration. The report reveals severe weather conditions claimed the most lives in January and February, with nearly 3,000 deaths during these months. An alarming 47 boats sank without survivors, underscoring the dangerous conditions faced by migrants. Criticism has been leveled at insufficient search and rescue efforts, with Comandando Fronteras lamenting the inadequate activation of necessary tools. Official figures often list these deaths as missing or unknown, masking the true extent of the humanitarian crisis. A United Nations Special Rapporteur's report underscores a deepening crisis for women and girls in Afghanistan under Taliban rule. Released ahead of the 56th session of the Human Rights Council, the report details a systematic suppression that severely curtails women's rights. That includes restrictions on women's education, work, health and freedom of movement and expression. The Taliban's policies highlighted in the report include bans on education programs, park access, and leadership roles for women. The Taliban also mandates women to wear a fully covered black hijab on television. The report condemns widespread human rights abuses such as physical and sexual violence, potentially amounting to crimes against humanity. Its recommendations include advocating for Afghanistan at the International Court of Justice and calling for increased resources for the International Criminal Court to investigate international law violations. The findings emphasize an urgent need to address gender apartheid as a crime against humanity. The Human Rights Council will discuss these findings in an interactive session starting June 18th. We are thrilled to announce a new show, This Hijabi Life on Muslim Network TV. Join us as we delve into the world of modest fashion, celebrating the hijab and the remarkable success stories of Muslim women across fashion, lifestyle, sports, and more. You can watch the first episode on Saturday, June the 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just take a look at it. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome to Muslim Network TV's fashion talk show about Muslim women, modest fashion, and the modern age. Today, we're spotlighting two designers who have created brand new hijab fashion concepts from Rook as well as Bale Street. The best in business are those who provide a solution or um, solve a problem. It is so empowering to know that you can find a happy balance between entrepreneurship and your faith and also giving back to your community. To remember, like when things happen, you have to keep going. Like this is my dream, no matter what is thrown at me, I'm not giving up, so remember to pivot. And I love that in hijab fashion, it's kind of like you're being creative and you're expressing yourself through fashion and style, but the hijab part is always, always connected to worshiping Allah. Every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on Muslim Network TV. That's all from our Toronto studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. Your support is needed more than ever to continue our mission of providing informative, educational, and inspiring content to Muslims in North America and around the world. 
Donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv slash donate. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum and good night.